Map Chat episode 208, featuring a look at one of my favorite space sim games, X3 Albion Prelude. Now this is a series from a German developer named Egosoft, began in 2011, and they've been uh, really uh, steadily releasing new games since, and they're just about ready to release the new Rebirth game sometime later this year. So that was a good time to take a look at this series. Now if you haven't heard of it before, uh, just imagine something like Elite or Privateer, but about a hundred times more sophisticated and nuanced. I mean, this is the sort of thing you disappear into for months at a time. Anyway, it's a really great game and there's a lot to it. So without further ado, here is Albion Prelude. And here we go with a little game called X3. This game uh, is developed by a German company by the name of Egosoft. And apparently these guys got their start making good old Amiga games. Haven't heard of any of the, the games they had made. I remember there was one called UG. Never played any, but I guess that's uh, you know how they got their start. Then in 1999, they started rolling out these X3 games. There's been quite a few. The you know, one I'll be showing you today is Albion uh, Prelude. That came out in 2011. And then uh, just they're just about ready to release the new uh, Albion Rebirth, I believe is the name of that. Or just maybe it's just X3 Rebirth. Uh, but that one is uh, looking really good. Um, but if you're just new, if you're new to the series, you might want to do like I did and start with uh, Terran Conflict. Really, all this Albion Prelude is it's got some new ships, new missions, and things. Uh, but I don't see any reason why you wouldn't want to just start with uh, Terran Conflict. Okay, so the motto of this game is uh, trade, fight, build, and think. You'll definitely be doing a lot of that. This is not. <laughs> oh man, this is in no way a uh, one of those quick and dirty casual games that. Uh, you can pick up, play for a while, and then throw away or learn in a few minutes. I mean, this is a, a really big undertaking to learn how to play this. It's very complex, very intimidating to, to novices. You know, I've been playing it off and on now for months, and there's still just plenty of stuff I don't know. And that's uh, even with a lot of research, looking at forums and looking at the wikis and guides. You know, you can do all that stuff and still feel like you, you know, you're still a sort of at the, at the freshman level of this thing. I mean, this is huge. Uh, but the the basics, you know, if you have played those games like Elite and Privateer, you'll recognize a lot of this. But it just lets you do so much more than those games. Uh, for example, uh, with Elite, you could trade goods from station to station. You could upgrade your ship. You could go to different systems and so on. So that's here. Uh, but this will also let you build up uh, space stations of your own. You can expand those into complexes. You can automate a lot of the ship activities. So instead of just having one ship, you can have uh, as many ships as you want, basically. Then use the AI to have them do things. It goes to uh, station to station trading for you. Um, you can even buy uh, software <laughs> for your ships that basically lets them become their own trader. You know, they sort of trade things independently so you don't have to keep issuing commands. But if you like to micromanage, uh, you can do that too. Just a lot of stuff to keep you busy here. There's a couple of different, actually uh, several different starting scenarios and they have an impact on the story i don't really care <laughs> the story is okay i guess but i don't think that's the reason people play this uh really the big difference in the different starting scenarios is what kind of resources you begin with and where you are in the in the universe uh the probably the best start to me would be the one that i'm playing now because it gives you this little m5 ship that you can uh upgrade for combat or for doing a quick little missions. It's, it's a fast ship. Uh, I kind of think of those as the motorcycles, the M5s. So <laughs> they're a lot faster, but they're also a lot lighter. Uh, they can't carry as much shields, and they can't carry as much weaponry either. So there's a lot of trade-offs, but the speed is going to be key. And then they also give you this trader ship, this basic transport, and those are important. Uh, there's a lot of commodity commodities that require a big ship to carry. You know, there's L-class cargo, medium cargo, and small cargo. So you have to think about that, especially at the beginning. To make money, you're going to be transporting lots of ore and things. So this transport ship's going to come in handy. Now, there is a lot of different kinds of ships in this game. Those are organized on two principles. One is the type of the class ship it is. If it's a transport, light fighter, is it a scout ship, you know, and so on. And plus, they're also divided by races. Uh, there's several different alien races in this game. They each have their own kind of ship, their own kind of station. So you have to be mindful of that. And some of, some of these uh, races are at war with each other, uh, so that can be interesting later on. Uh, at the beginning, though, really what you want to do is try to uh, get your 
your engine's upgraded so the ships will be faster. <laughs> it's, got, it's very tedious at first because you have these really slow ships. Uh, you want to get those uh, upgraded as soon as possible. You can also upgrade the maneuverability. That comes in pretty handy. Uh, you can also upgrade the cargo space. It doesn't make the ships larger. It just uh, makes them compress cargo better. And that gets expensive really quick. So you have to do a little uh, quick math and figure out what's what it makes sense to do. It doesn't make sense... Uh, sh- doesn't make sense to spend, you know, way more than you spent on the ship just to increase the cargo, uh, you know, by <laughs> 50%. But, you know, usually you can uh, at least upgrade it some before it gets to be a losing proposition. So uh, that can be fun, uh, figuring stuff like that out. Uh, you won't have to do any combat, at least with this uh, starting scenario. You really won't be doing combat for a while. Uh, so you can save. You don't have to worry about the lasers and the shields, but uh, later on you will. And... You need to keep in mind that you have to, you know, each ship has a certain kind of shield it can use, uh, five or one megajoule, five, 25, and upwards from there. It goes all the way up to maybe 200. And they also have uh, different kinds of lasers they can use, and each of these laser types has a different uh, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, just a lot, <laughs> lots of stuff. The same thing with missiles. Uh, sometimes a, a ship that seems relatively puny it can be outfitted with missiles that make it really powerful, so you can also factor that in. Now, these stations that you see here, these are ones that are controlled by the, the different factions. Uh, later on, of course, you'll be building your own stations. But you always want to explore the systems thoroughly, make sure you've got gotten each one of these stations on your radar, because uh, that way you can see what resources they need, what they're willing to pay for them, what the stations make, and you know you have to be comparing notes all the time. Uh, trying to figure out how to make the best deals. Uh, you eventually will get a feel for things like the ore. Is uh, If you can find ore for anything less than like 75 or 80 credits, you might as well go ahead and stock up on that because a lot of places will spend anywhere from like 100 or even 200 to get ore. And it's all based on uh, sort of supply and demand, just like a real economy. If a station, if, if a big freighter, I mean if a big uh, transport ship has just landed, at a station and dumped a bunch of ore there, uh, they're not going to pay you nearly as much for ore as a station that's been, uh, you know, it's gone a long time without any supplies and they're <laughs> kind of desperate. You know, so you, it's, you always want to be thinking about that. It's not just, you know, you're not alone in this universe. Uh, you're not the only trader. There's all these other uh, aliens all around you, all these other ships that are doing uh, trades. And that's another reason why you want a fast ship, because uh, if you find a really good trade somewhere... It really sucks if you don't get to it in time and some other ship's already beaten you. So you see, like, this uh, ship or this station here takes energy cells, meat steak, kahunas, and ore. Uh, and they also take a secondary resource. There's even a stock exchange. They don't have that in the Terran conflict, but this one, eventually you'll get access to the stock exchange. So you can actually just trade stocks instead of uh, building up stuff on your own. Also lets you uh, kind of take a peek into the mechanics of the economy, I guess, and see what uh, what's valuable. What it, it kind of helps you plan what stations to build. But you know, on the other hand, I think a big part of the big part of the joy for me is the building up your stations. And sometimes you don't necessarily want to know too much. It's kind of fun just to take a risk and see what happens. Okay, so what I want to probably going to do here, starting off in this area, is start trying to get a handle on this ore trade selling ore to stations. You know, and also, I want to take that little advanced discoverer. Since he can uh, is really fast, I can make him do <laughs> basically a, nar- uh, a narcotics run. You know, I, th- I think of these M5s kind of like little motorcycles, little motorcycle gangs, right? So they're way faster than most other ships. They can't carry very much, but if you're carrying really expensive and small cargo, like the space fuel, which is, uh, <laughs> I guess, bootleg alcohol, uh, the they can outrun or at least try to stay away from those police ships and they won't get caught. I've actually found later in the game, if you uh, it's sometimes better to have lots of those little bitty ships doing your trading than it is to have a couple of the big slow ones. Kind of counterintuitive, but um, you know they they can maybe that little ship might be able to make two or three runs in the time it takes that big ship to make one. Okay, so the. In addition to the trading, you also have all kinds of missions. Some are story-based and some are just uh, randomly generated, or I guess procedurally generated by these stations. 
they come in a couple of different types. The little uh, scent sign there, some type of trading mission. You also have uh, passenger transport missions. Uh, sometimes those are with the little C or a little scent sign. Sometimes they're with the light bulb. You also have military missions, and you have space station building missions. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm leaving at least one of them out. Sometimes I'll have you scan things. There's just lots of different kinds of uh, missions. And usually uh, each different kind of ship is going to be better for certain types of missions like these. I don't remember doing a lot of missions with the transport ships. Every now and then you get a mission that's like transport 58 of these chips somewhere. Uh, more typically, though, at least a little secret I found, if you, if you want to get ahead quickly, try to get a passenger transport ship. Those are called expresses, if you start off in this scenario. They're relatively cheap and relatively fast, and you get lots and lots of uh, very profitable missions to take people different places. So that could be a way to quickly get some money. Uh, the combat, you know, it's going to take a while before you get really good combat missions. They, you've got a ranking system for each one of these, uh, you know, like trading has a rank system. Uh, you have to build that up by trading. Same thing with combat. The more you fight, the, fast, the higher your combat rating goes, and eventually you'll get better missions in the different factions. Also, <laughs> the factions have uh, uh, their own reputation system, so... If you uh, kill lots of pirates in one sector or one uh, sort of uh, faction-controlled sectors, uh, then you'll start to build up reputation with them and start getting better missions. Or you can do their missions for them, and that's another, you know, probably the fastest way to gain rep. The reason you want to get the rep is that only a lot of the stations and ships won't be available to you if you have too low of a, a reputation. So just another... <laughs> <laughs> you're starting to get an idea of the, the scale of what you're getting into here. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a long time. A so these, uh, these uh, free trading stations will take lots of different kinds of commodities. They don't make anything. And they're the only places that buy certain things, like the quantum tubes. But you'll notice probably uh, fairly early that most, you know, a lot of these other trades have already, they're not very lucrative, right? Because there's other ships that have been making the runs. Um, and you might notice that the space station will actually pay you less for the commodity than the factory will sell it to you. So that means you're going to have to really get out there and explore, sometimes go two or three sectors away before you get a good deal. Now, you can make your life easier. Once you start to get money, you'll be able to buy something called the Best Buys Locator. And the best, uh, th there's one that, same thing for selling things, and I'll show you that uh, later on. Uh, that's quite nice. Uh, you can also get a trading extension. That's going to be very important. That'll let you control your, make trades with your other ships. And uh, eventually you'll get the, you know, full-on AI that'll just do all your trading for you. It's called a sector trader or universal trader. That's way in the future, though, for us. Uh, so what you want to do is just fly around these sectors for a while. Try to hit all the stations, get them on your, your map. Now, at the beginning, you'll have to actually dock at the stations to see what they w are willing to buy and sell things for. Uh, relatively cheaply, though, uh, you'll be able to buy this trading extension. I recommend you get that as soon as possible. Uh, that way, you can just click on the stations without having to dock to see who's uh, selling what, at what you know, buying and selling at what price. Uh, that's definitely something you should get as soon as you possibly can. Also, you can, instead of having to visit the different sectors, go through the jump gates and all, you can buy a... Uh, a satellite, navigation relay satellite, and just basically dump that anywhere in the solar system. And that will do the same thing as uh, having a ship there. So you could just click on the universe map, click on the place sector where the satellite is, and you'll be able to see all the prices. And it even works with that Best Buy locator thing I was telling you about. So it's, it's really cool. Definitely want to get some of those. But again, <laughs> this is, you know, on down the road. Uh, for now, we just want to start trying to get some money. Uh, you probably want to have at least uh, two or three hundred thousand before you start thinking about things like that. Okay, so the space fuel is uh, illegal in the other sectors. I think it might even be illegal in, in this sector. Uh, so it's very lucrative, and it's it's got the advantage of being a small profile. So you can put it on that little bitty ad advanced uh, discoverer ship and just zip it back and forth. But you don't want to get caught by the cops. Uh, they will. Uh, you're always getting scanned by the feds, I guess, and you don't want to get into trouble with them. So it's kind of a risky 
proposition, but it's a, it's, it's a good way to make some cash. Now, the only problem with contraband, of course, is not every place is going to buy it. This uh, Heron's Nebula space station is about the only place you're going to find that I found uh, early on, anyway, where you could sell it. Uh, later on, you'll have these pirate space stations where you can sell it to. But anyway, right here at the beginning, it's a good place to start selling. Unfortunately, it's going to get full relatively quick. So you can either wait around for them to sell off their supply or find some other things to do in the meantime. You probably notice all these asteroids floating around. Now, that's another way you can play the game. Uh, you can uh, buy a mineral scanner and scan the asteroids and try to find which ones have high uh, silicone or <laughs> silicone, uh, silicon or ore. Then uh, later on, you can build a station there, uh, or a mine, I guess I should say. Or uh, some of the real small ones, you can actually buy a little mineral laser and blast them apart and then uh, collect or that way. I've never tried that before. Uh, it's just, you know, <laughs> one of the many parts of the game I haven't really experimented with. You also see there I could, uh, and the red, stuff in red is stuff I don't have high enough rep to buy, including that enforcement license. Uh, each of the different factions has one of those, and if you buy them, what it lets you do is any of the enemies of that race, like pirates, for example, or uh, some of the warring races that drift into their controlled sectors, if you destroy them for them, then you get a nice, very nice perk, a lot of money, <laughs> depending on how you know bad of a enemy it was. But it's a way. It's you know, it's quite nice to get that little extra uh, award for doing something you probably <laughs> enjoy doing anyway. Okay, so I'm just kind of looking here at all the different trades you can make. You probably have to just take out the old pen and paper to begin with and start trying to think of some good trades to make. Uh, instead of, you won't usually won't be in a situation where you can just buy at one station, go sell at another station, and just go back and forth. Usually you have to set up something more complicated, maybe a three, maybe like a big triangle. Uh, sometimes uh, you can just go back, you know, you sell at one station, then you have to go back with an empty ship, you know, and then go back with a full ship. Sometimes that actually makes sense. Um, but if you're really ambitious, you can set up a more complicated trading uh, network than that. Unfortunately, there was always going to be a certain element of, of risk because you don't know what the other uh, ships are doing. I've been in a situation many times where I had a really good deal. You know, I, I purchased a lot of stuff for at a very good price, but then I couldn't find any place to, to unload it. I actually lost money, just finally had to just sell it at a loss just to get, get rid of it. Uh, so you don't want to do that, which is why all those satellites and everything is going to come in handy later. So just skipping forward a bit here. Basically what I've been doing is just using that Discoverer ship to bring the space fuel back and forth to that space station, uh, space trading station. And here is Nebula. That's been pretty profitable for me. Uh, I've also been able to expand the cargo room of that, or cargo bay of that uh, Discoverer. And then I'm down here in the ore belt trying to find a good deal on ore. It's really nice to fill your ship up, transport ship completely with ore. You can usually find a place to dump that relatively cheaply. Now I'm having to control, I'm controlling that Discoverer by remote control, basically, using the computer. Uh, you can set the ships up to send you, automatically send you a little message that says uh, they've completed their mission. And this is kind of where you start to see the weaknesses of the game, the interface. Uh, there's a lot of uh, messages that are going to start popping up, and you're going to have to go through some menus each time to set up the trades. That can get a bit tedious after a while. You know, eventually, like I said, you're you're going to have the option to set, set them up automatically to trade. So it's a little bit more effective, I think, if you have stations, because then you can set a ship up to do nothing but buy resources for a station or sell the stuff that the station makes. You can adjust the prices however you see fit. Or you can just uh, make them a sector trader, and then they will uh, trade within a station. And the little pilots that you do that with will level up. And as they gain levels, they'll get new abilities. They'll be able to go to, you know, further to visit different sectors. They uh, can make more profitable trades, basically. And eventually, you can set them up as a universe trader, which means they can just go wherever they, they want in the universe. Of course, the problem with that is they tend to go in dangerous places and get killed. And that can be really bad, and, you know, after it's taken. It takes a lot of gold to set these guys up, and then it takes a long time for them to get the experience, so... I don't usually do a lot of those universe traders. So if you want to make money with this uh, scenario, you want to get started, probably the 
you know, I don't know if this is necessarily the best way to do it, but I found that just uh, going back and forth with this ore from the ore belt and the space fuel up top will let you get, you know, several hundred thousand uh, credits within about a half hour to an hour. And what you probably want to work towards is buying that express ship. Uh, once you've got that, then you can do a lot of those personnel transport missions, which will quickly get lucrative. You'll get millions of credits for doing those sometimes. Um, or you can start working on getting your first station, getting that stuff. But anyway, I want to skip ahead a little bit here and show you some of my later saves. All right, so here's a later game. This is something like five days worth of game time. You can see I have uh, lots of ships and lots of stations. And most of these stations have been expanded into complexes. So the complex is just a basically stations that are connected together. There's a couple of advantages to that. Uh, the biggest one is instead of having all these separate stations and each one having to have its own fleet to, of supply ships, you can just connect them together and then, then they can just share the resources. So most uh, stations require energy cells. So you can just uh, bring all those cells together and then they will just automatically be distributed. Uh, you can also make a self-sustaining uh, model that way. Uh, sometimes uh, that makes sense. Usually, though, you're going to still have to bring in other, you know, some resources. Uh, for example, energy cells, very cheap to buy those. It makes a lot more sense just to buy them and bring them in uh, because once you have to build, if you try to build your own solar station, those are in the millions of credits to build. And then on top of that, they require these very expensive crystals to operate. So, <laughs> you know, it just gets to be kind of unmanageable. Although I got to say, uh, one of my most profitable stations was just a little one megajoule shield, and it required three different resources to make the shields. And I had uh, basically just bringing all those in with different ships. And even with all that, it was by far my most profitable station. So a lot of it depends on supply and demand. So here's a passenger transport mission. Since I'm in the Express, it has life support. Now, uh, you can have other ships and just put life support in them, but some of the missions you won't be able to do even with that because they, they, want, they want class and comfort. So you need a special passenger ship. You know, like <laughs> It's got the reclining seats and the captain's chairs. I don't know what they've got, but uh, only the military personnel will ride in you know, a battleship with life support. Uh, what you're probably going to want is this express ship. And as you'll see, this can get pretty lucrative. I'm just looking at some of the graphs of the stations there. You can see which ones are most profitable and where you need to maybe add some more stuff. Of course, when you're building the stations, you want to look around the sectors nearby, make sure you've got a supply of energy or whatever it is you need for that station. You won't make a profit if your ships are having to go three or four sectors away to get your resources. You know, and same thing with, you know, is there any place close by to sell it? <laughs> it's, like, it's like a monster complex there in this in the seas well here. You can click this uh, plus on the map to get, you know, sort of look at it on the different uh, different plane. That can be really confusing at first because some of the missions you'll have will, or when you're setting up your complexes, they have to be fairly close together to connect them. So just remember to click that plus and make sure that it's close in both uh, planes. Otherwise, it might look like it's right on top of your other station, but actually be far away. Okay, there's a personnel mission. So you can see, that's just very close by. Got my jump drive. Go ahead and speed that up, and this will take me to the uh, mission. Then I can just go right to the station and make a quick profit and also get reputation points, so... I think it's kind of hard to argue with this uh, doing these uh, passenger transport missions. Some of them don't make sense. Uh, I, I keep getting this voyage of a lifetime mission, and there's one called Quick Taxi. And those, you know, they have like 50 stops, and the pay sucks. So I don't know what the hell's going on with those. Uh, usually I just wait around till I get the nice one shot deal. You know, take this guy to the station in this sector and make a million credits. You know, well worth going to a couple of different sectors to get one of those. Now, you notice I'm using the AI to dock. You can try to dock manually, but usually the AI does fine. But it's not perfect by any means, so you definitely want to save it occasionally, save it to a couple different slots. I've uh, lost the game many times 
just uh, randomly, it'll just crash into an asteroid. Or it's really bad when you're coming out of those gates. A lot of times, the AI, the AI will just swing your ship right into the gate and destroy your ship. Uh, I guess that's just a, a bug or a glitch. But, you know, considering the size and the scale of the game and the complexity, it's, it's more surprising to me that there's not a lot more of those kind of uh, problems. But usually it's quite smooth and quite nice. You do need a very, very powerful computer if you want to run this thing at full spec. Uh, I got this. I had to reduce the resolution down to like 1280. <laughs> I had to uh, turn off all the aliasing, the, put the models on like medium. And even then, it just really clunks along sometimes. It's, uh, you know, again, this is not like a huge development team here where they've got lots and lots of people they can put on uh, optimizing the code, I guess. So I don't, it, I don't really care. I would rather have the performance than the little extra detail on the graphics. But if you're the type of person that wants to play this in, you know, like 19, 20 uh, by 1080 or what is it, 1200 resolution with all the you know textures up all the way, uh, you're really going to need a monster computer. Uh, like I said, I just couldn't even approach that on mine. And I guess, you know, of course, your mileage may vary. <laughs> Uh, but yes, it's, you're going to see the, the combats are difficult enough without having these ridiculous frame rates. So you're probably going to want to, uh, compromise a little bit. Just remember when you start off, your reputation won't be high enough and your missions won't pay nearly as much as they will later on. So you probably want to just stick to the one area for a while until you got enough reputation to really start making some money and then just... Gradually expand out from there. So you see, there's one for 279,000. You got a whole hour to do it, though. But as you'll see here, when I talk to this uh, other station, he's got <laughs> 2.4 million credit mission, uh, which is really cool. But it's, I've only got 24 minutes to do that. So you can take on as many missions as you want, but they're all. I guess there's a few that aren't, but most are timed. So you really want to be thinking, uh, do you have time to do it? I found that anything below, uh, below like 24 minutes, I think I've managed to do some that were 20 minutes, but if a lot of the missions are only six or seven minutes long, I just haven't been able to do it. I don't, I don't know what it would take. You know, these passenger ships only go so fast, even the best ones. So I don't know if that's... Maybe they put that in there knowing that you just couldn't do it. And want to see if you were dumb enough to actually take on the mission. If you fail doing the mission, then you actually can lose reputation. And in really bad cases, you might actually have uh, people coming after you. Uh, there's missions, for example, to recover ships. So if you sometimes you recover a ship and you decide, you know, I'd kind of like to have that ship for myself. Well, if you don't give it back, <laughs> uh, then there's going to be some uh, police come after you eventually. Uh, there's some tricks to get around that, but. You, know, you kind of have to decide how how you how do you want to role play the game? Do you uh, what kind of character do you want to play? You want to be ruthless and willing to do something like that? You know, do you want to manipulate the AI or do you want to try to make it as realistic as possible? I kind of like to keep it relatively realistic. I like to you know play within my own uh, real life ethics. I'm not willing to do just anything to get to get cash. Okay, so I'm ready to get my. 2.4 million credits. That is really great. I'm glad that happened while I was making the videos. Uh, they're kind of rare. Some of the, a lot of the stuff that happens in the game does uh, happen rarely enough, and when it does, you really feel good about that. And it's always something nice to look forward to. Now, unfortunately, I'm not that great with combat uh, part of the game. Uh, the, if you play the Terran Conflict, you get a ship called the Spring Blossom, which is basically, you know, massively overpowered. Uh, if you play it uh, without doing all the missions, though, you're gonna have you're gonna get these ships that are quite a bit more challenging to play with. A lot of them are just really slow. You can't get away. You know, once combat's initiated, and your weapons might not be powerful enough to get you out of a situation. So you really have to pick your battles carefully. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the combat. All right, so I'm gonna be doing this combat in a Corvette class ship called the Heavy Centaur, and these are relatively expensive you know it's a lot more expensive than the express which i think is something like three hundred thousand. 
Now, these things are more like, uh, I want to say something like 30, 40 million, but they're definitely not indestructible, and it can be hard to find weapons for your ships. A lot of the weapons, you have to go all over to find them, and they can cost you know, half a million uh, credits just for that. Uh, you, you have different turrets on the sides of these larger ships, and you can set those up to automatically shoot down missiles or try to help you out. Uh, but you definitely don't want to rely too heavily on that. Now, the mission I'm on with this guy is he's supposed to be uh, trying to capture a one of these Xenon ships. And the only way to capture the little ships is to basically blast them real hard. Hopefully, the pilot will panic and eject. And when that happens, you can actually get out of your ship and go over there and claim his ship. And that can be quite lucrative. You can also get some special ships that way. Uh, otherwise, you can try to board a, sh board a ship, but that is just really involved and very, very difficult. I've only managed to do it once or twice, and it, it was uh, required about 30 reloads. Pretty much took all night just to capture one ship. And uh, these, It wasn't one of these Xenon ships, which is supposed to be even... You know, these are really supposed to be hard to uh, capture even for the pros. So, <laughs> you know, forget about it. Um, if you are interested in that side, though, it is fun. You get to buy these Marines and train them up, and then you have to get in close to the ship, and then they go through this sort of aliens-like scenario. You can hear them. You, you know, they don't... It doesn't, like, switch to a first-person shooter model or anything, but it's still kind of fun. You can, a lot of imagination involved, I guess. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is lure away some of these ships. Obviously, I can't take on the whole pack, but maybe if I can take on one and then I use my jump drive to jump to that other gate over there, get a little distance, give my shields time to recharge, I might be able to do some damage in this sector. Like I said, the big problem with this heavy centaur is it's just a little too slow. So a lot of ships can catch up to it. You'd, you'd expect the little fighters to catch up to it, but you really want something that's going to be able to outrun those big ships. Because <laughs> once those get in close, it's pretty much toast. Looking at my missiles here. Not playing with my usual setup, so I don't have my, my keys mapped. But you definitely want to look at the different missiles, because they can easily swing the battle. Uh, some of the missiles are very, very powerful. Now, the enemies will try to shoot them down, usually, but... At least they'll be shooting at the missiles and give you some time to recharge your shields or get away. So there he is. He's firing his, his weapons at me. I'm trying to strafe to get away from that fire. Now something else that's unfortunate is the uh, very, very easy to ram into ships. It's just way too easy to do that. Uh, you really have to watch what you're doing. You can try to match. There's a button to match their speed, but you have to map that as well, <laughs> which again, I sadly did not do this uh, video. So you want to keep an eye on the enemy's speed, and remember that as they take damage, they will start to slow down. Their engines uh, won't be as fast anymore, so you have to keep an eye on that. I've many, many times lost the game, almost had the guy destroyed and then crashed into him and died. <laughs> so this agony. Uh, this game, it's you know, it's it's really it's one of those games where if you die, it has to reload the main screen again, and then you have to load your save game again. That can just seems I don't know. It probably only takes a couple minutes in real life, but it just feels like hours. <laughs> it's just it's so frustrated and having to wait for that. Okay, so I zapped over here to this other gate. As you can see, these these weapons I've got are really effective against those little ships, but uh, the bigger ones have a lot more shielding, a lot more hull. So that's going to be tricky. I don't see them over here yet, so maybe I've got a little time. You can try to destroy these enemy uh, stations. That, of course, takes a very long time. It doesn't have any defenses except for those uh, ships hanging around. Some of the stations will have these towers around them. There you can see my turrets automatically firing for me. You can, if you want, go to a different display mode or the different uh, turrets yourself and man them yourself. So that can be nice. Uh, if you have a faster ship especially, what you can do is uh, engage an enemy, swing around, and then switch to your back turret. You know, you can either blow up the missiles that are coming for you or even, you know, take out some of those fighters yourself. Uh, again, though, the problem with that is you're not steering the ship while you're doing that, so that can be a bit of <laughs> a bit alarming. It'd be kind of fun to have a multiplayer version where you could have your buddies in the turrets, but I guess you got uh, other games for that. 
Uh, the infinite, the endless alerts for missiles. You'll be hearing that quite a lot. I just wish that it would tell you what kind of missile it was, because usually it's nothing to worry about, but uh, there are missiles in the game that can one-shot you. It would really be really nice if that AI would go ahead and tell you what kind of missile it was. I'm just going to have to hope that my turret will take care of it. Oh, one night I should say this too. One nice thing about playing with a mouse is that uh, the weapons behave more like a turret, so you don't have to have your ship pointed at the at the crosshairs. You know, I mean, what you want to shoot at. If you play with a joystick or the gamepad, you have to actually steer towards. You know, you're just shooting straight on. Uh, it's actually much better with a mouse because then you can kind of strafe away, kind of point yourself away, and still be hitting it. You know, there might be some way to do that with the controllers, but I haven't found what it is. Okay, let's see. This is going to be pretty close. If you could just get rid of his shields and get in, start eating into his hull, uh, then you'll hopefully be taking out his guns and slowing him down. Looks like I'll just about take him. Oh, and he's gone. <laughs> Fortunately, it looks like I'm just about going too, so I think I'm going to get out while the getting's good. So the last thing I'm going to show you is one of these station building missions and these are some of the most lucrative in the game you don't you can do them just by hiring the ships to you can hire the AI controlled ships to uh, transport the stations for you but it really doesn't really get to be convenient until you have your own uh, I think they're called TL ships these really massive spaceships that are capable of hauling whole stations in their cargo bay um, now, once you take the mission, you want to make sure that you can actually deliver <laughs> the factory. Uh, usually, it won't be as easy as just going to their own, uh, you know, the faction's own uh, shipyard. You usually have to go far away to get the station or the factory. So that's another reason why it's nice if you have your own uh, transport ship. I got this elephant, appropriately named. Uh, so you can put a jump drive in it and just tell it, hey, jump over there to that dockyard, shipyard. Get the factory, and then we'll go to the sector, build the station. And usually these are easily worth a couple of uh, million credits, but I've even uh, made more than that sometimes. And they're really easy to do, just some <laughs> basically sifting through a couple of menus, and you're good. You know, and of course, too, it's good to be building up these economies of all these different sectors, because that just gives you more trading opportunities, more people to buy your stuff. So that's something to think about, too. If the... If you have sometimes you have sectors that there's no traders there, there's nobody buying their stuff or selling their stuff, and those stations will eventually just disappear on you. So you kind of have to be thinking about the, I guess, universal economy, or at least uh, the factions' economy. You know, I don't know how well you can hear the the audio in this, you know, in the game, but the music is just really, really nicely done. I played this game, so <laughs> I don't even want to think about how many hours. I never got tired of the soundtrack. It's just really beautiful music. I definitely want to have the have this on a CD I can listen to <laughs> during a long car ride, perhaps. Know that they, I think they sell the soundtrack separately. Okay, so I got the factory put on my elephants. Now I just need to get the elephant to the sector where they need the station. So let's see. Okay, now I know where I need to send her. You can see, you know, you have to kind of go through these menus. That can definitely get a little tricky after a while. Another good reason to make sure you're not trying to max out the specs on a bad PC because these your mouse will start to get jerky. And, <laughs> and you know, it's even more frustrating when you're trying to go through these menus and the, you get this really a lot of lag and you're... You know, mouse pointers jumping around. <laughs> just drive you nuts. Okay, so now I need to... Uh, you can't just send the transport ship by itself to build the station for whatever reason they decided that you, as you know, the player ship, has to be in the same sector where you want to build. So got to refuel, then I'll get over there and show you how to build it. All right, so I've switched back to my Corvette here, and I'm jumped to the sector. There's my elephant over there. So you just go to the... You know, make sure you got the the right location and yeah, so it's right there okay now I just go to my elephant and I'll go to the freights click the yeah there we go build and you have to line it up with this navigation beacon remember you have those two different planes to worry about so 
that looks right, but and then I need to uh, hit the plus there, make sure it's it's there as well, and then just hit enter and bada bing, got my got a station set up there. So that thing is uh, another trading opportunity. Plus, I get all the credits for building it. So I I really like those missions. I definitely recommend as soon as you can. To, you might you might even want to get your your big uh, transport ship before you start worrying about your corvette or fighting ship because you can really make a lot of profit with that and plus you're building up the economy anyway we could go on all day long with this but it looks like i'm already about uh 40 minutes into this so i'll leave it leave it here i think you've seen more than enough to decide if this is something you would like to play there's a lot way too much to to know about the game to cover in a video but there are some good sources online uh if there's a great a wiki you can look at it has lots of great information i was Pretty much you want to have a laptop or a tablet PC or I guess your phone <laughs> handy uh, so you can keep that wiki open on a on a separate device so you don't have to keep switching in and out of this. You're definitely going to be looking up stuff. But you know, even uh, you know the few quibbles I have uh, with the game, they, they're very, they, they pale in comparison to the fun factor here. It's a really great game, and it really rewards uh, the time that you invest in it. So I really can't recommend this enough. This is X3 Albion Prelude, uh, but I recommend that you start with the Terran Conflict. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I should be back next week with a new interview series with a uh, rather controversial figure. If you're into, I'll give you one hint, if you're into interactive fiction, you definitely don't want to miss this one. As always, I want to thank you if you have supported and or donated to the show. I have a new website that I'm working on. It's going to be at mattchat.us. Now, I'm fairly new to the software. It's WordPress, and I'm trying to find, you know, still trying to uh, create a good theme for it and everything. If you've got some experience in that area, would like to help out, uh, definitely get in touch with me. Uh, in the meantime, though, I appreciate your support. You can uh, find the links there to PayPal or at the Armchair Arcade site. Uh, any way you do it, guys, I really appreciate those subscriptions and donations. You're keeping these episodes coming, so thank you very, very much. Now, what about that Ale of the Week? Uh, this week I've got a little number called <sighs> Elbulum? <laughs> Ebulum? Ebulum? I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Uh, elderberry Black Ale. And there's quite a nice little story about this ale. It was introduced in Scotland by Welsh Druids in the, in the 9th century. Elderberry Ale was part of the Celtic Autumn Festivals where the ale was passed around the people of the village. So, nice uh, seasonal. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, in medieval times, elderberries, elderberries were used for many purposes and are known to be high in fruit oils. Rich black ale with a fruity aroma. Uh, I always think about the Monty Python line about elderberries. Okay, let's see what else. Malted barley brie, elderberries, roasted oats, and barley and hops, and something called bog myrtle. Well, that sounds delicious. Anyway, yeah, let's see. Where is it brewed? Uh, Brewed by Heather Ale Limited, Williams Brothers Brewing in Scotland. So, anyway, quite a bit to this, but let's get it open and see what it's all about. All right, so I've got some of this Ebulum here in the rather excellent drinking horn. <laughs> I was just thinking that name does sound rather clinical, doesn't it? Like, uh, Ebulum would be some sort of residue left after a terrible infection. But anyway, let's give this a, a smell. <laughs> Ah, it smells really nice, actually. Uh, you can definitely smell this is a sort of a molasses-like, uh, kind of almost like a grape-like aroma to this. It's very sweet. Uh, so I don't want to say it's, it's not very coffee-like. It's actually more chocolatey uh, smelling. It's just a very nice aroma to this. Maybe blueberries. I'm not quite sure, to be honest, what elderberries smell like, but, you know, I assume that's probably what I'm smelling here. Anyway, let's give it a taste. Uh, it's quite uh, quite good. It's got kind of a, a nice, thick, creamy texture to it. Um, a lot of sort of lighter berry sort of notes, as you'd expect. But kind of a nutty-like flavor to it. Just, uh, yeah, no bitterness at all. Um, kind of a chocolatey taste. A little bit of a coffee thing there. Uh, quite smooth. You know, it's got 6.5% alcohol, but you definitely don't taste that uh, going down. There's no... Uh, unpleasant aftertaste at all. I gotta say, just all around uh, very good. 
I, w I would say I would like a bit more punch, you know, as far as flavor goes. It's uh, rather subtle. Uh, but it's, uh, it's quite nice. I'm going to go maybe, let's say, oh, I'll go four out of five drinking horns on this. I like what I'm tasting. I just wish there was a little bit more concentration of those flavors. Uh, but still, very drinkable, very nice, very enjoyable. Anyway, let's uh, wrap this up with a quotation. And the quotation is from William S. Burroughs. And it goes something like this. After one look at this planet, any visitor from outer space would say, I want to see the manager. See you guys next week. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries.